Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Good day folks, welcome back to Sport Fishing on the Fly on the Bench. Today I'm going to tie you up my Hot Mess Caddis Emerger. This little bug's been working good for me on the Columbia, so make sure you have these materials handy before you tie the fly. For hook, I'm using an Emerger um, barbless hook from Arex in size 14. For thread, I'll be using Classic Waxed by Semperfly. Uh, this is the Primrose color, 12 For the shuck, I'm using Antron, and it's in um, Dunn, Pale Morning Dunn, I think it is. For the body, I'm using Dirty Bug Yarn by Semperfly in Caddis Brown. For the rib, I'll be using Floral Bright by Semperfly, and this is the sulfur color. For the underwing, I'm using CDC and Natural. And the overwing, I'm using Deer Hair. And for the head of the fly, I'll be using K-Pop Dubbing by Semperfly. Um, I've used the Tan, the Adams, and for this particular fly, I'm just using the Olive Dunn color. So you go ahead and start your thread on the hook. I've got the hook turned slightly in the vise to access the back of it where I'm going to tie in my shuck, which makes it a lot easier. And I'm just going to run my thread down about halfway down the bend. Almost to the halfway point. Snip that away. Next, take your um, material of choice that you'll be using for your shuck. Sorry, I just misplaced mine. <laughs> I'm going to use the Antron, and I'm just taking a small amount. So you could use Zelon, you could use uh, Poly Yarn is good. Um, I like this color of Antron, the um, Pale Morning Done. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to trim it a little bit shorter, make it more manageable. Very small amount. I just want to give a little hint of something. So this butt ends, I'm just going to pick up and snip off. And then I'm just going to take the shuck and I'm going to just, I'm just hitting it with my scissor blade here. I don't want it totally even, but I don't want it too long either. So it's kind of messy. Then you can turn your hook back in the vise, straighten it out. I'm going to bring my thread up to about the two-third point on the hook. Next, tie in your ribbing material. I'm using the Floral Bright in Sulphur. It's nice and bright. The, um, the Emergers do have a very uh, noticeable segmented body. Um, and you could use a, you know, a chartreuse. You know, I'm just trying to catch that with my thread. Um, kind of like this sulphur yellow color. Caddis. I think I'm going to try using it on my um, my Stillwater Caddis patterns. I like it that much. It would work good. Next, take your body material. So I'm using the Dirty Bug yarn, and I've taken a strand, um, and I've actually split it in half. So I only have a half of one of these strands. So they split quite easily in two. I want to keep it fairly thin. I'm just going to oops, bring my thread down, tie this in. And then you can just wrap this up the hook. Being careful not to hit the point, if you can, of your hook with this, because it will separate if you do that when you've only got the one strand. It's just got to be a little bit gentle with it. And of course you could do your body in, you know, whatever, whatever color your caddis in your area are in. Um, 
I've done some in tan, I've done some with a black body, I've done some with an olive body. Go ahead and snip that away. Now you can just take your ribbing material and begin winding it up. Even spaces. Just form a nice rib on the fly. I'm going to tie that off. Really well. Bring my thread back to that point again. Next, I've just got one CDC feather. Um, I'm just going to place this under the wing, measuring it to about the back of the hook. I'm just going to put a couple of wraps in there and then check my measurement. I want it just a tiny bit shorter, so I'm going to pull it forward. Get it to where I want it and then tie that off. You can snip away the stem. And then next, take your elk hair or deer hair. I'm using the deer hair. Um, I just like this color of fine deer hair. It kind of matches the caddis in my area. And I've just taken a very small amount, um, not even half the, the hook gape width. And I've cleaned out the under fur and I'm just gonna uh, even the tips up in my hair stacker. little bit of that under fur in there. This particular deer hair has got tons of under fur in it. And so it's a very, very small amount. I don't want this fly to float totally on the surface. That's why the body's done with dirty bug urine as opposed to like a dry fly dubbing. Um, but I do want to give it the hint of a wing and I want the top of the fly to be in the surface film. So I'm just gonna my measurement there and I'm going to trim my hair before I tie it in. I like to do that if I'm not making a traditional elk hair caddis um, head on it. I'm going to take my wax, apply some wax. I always apply wax when tying in a hackle or um, I like to use it with the deer hair or the elk hair because it's slippery. I'm just going to make a loose, couple of loose loops around that and then just pull it tight. Wind my thread through the ends. Catch those down and I'm going to make sure that I'm coming right back to where my body starts. Like that. Next I'm going to take some of my kapok dubbing uh, it's a wonderful dry fly dubbing if you haven't tried it before. It really goes onto the thread uh, very easily. Floats forever. I've done my own float tests with it. Um, like in a cup on the desk and it floats for... I had one fly sitting in there. I swear it was in there for two weeks. <laughs> but definitely for a few days anyways. Um, this dubbing is made from the seed of the kapok tree. So it's actually a natural um, material that Simperflies come out with. And I'm just gonna build a nice head on here. I'm gonna be brushing out just slightly. So I wanna build it up. You could also use um, a CDC in a dubbing loop for the head. You could do a deer hair, a spun deer hair head. I like the kapok because it does float so well and it's gonna sit up nice in the surface film. Just making sure I got enough on there. And then you can whip finish. Oh, my thread just broke. Look at that. I'm doing that again. Piece of thread there. Oh.
This fly is giving me more trouble than any other fly I've done for you. You're going to have to edit this part. Sorry, Dawn. Now you can just take and whip finish. Snip away your thread. And I'm just going to take my little, um, I've got a little Velcro brush here. And I'm just going to slightly um, brush the k pock out a little bit. Make it a little bit messy. That's why it's called the hot mess because uh, caddis, when they're emerging, they're a bit of a hot mess. You can see, <laughs> you see them, pictures of them or observe them. So. I like to just brush it out a little bit, just like that. And that's it. Would love in the comments if you Tell me what kind of caddis emerger you prefer. There's all different kinds. Like I said, um, I do about three or four different kinds, anywhere from the Holy Grail uh, caddis emerger uh, to this virgin, version. And, um, Don's version of his uh, emerger caddis is also very good. It's on YouTube here. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone. Conserve the waters and tight lines.